Hello and welcome to News Up Now. I'm Gleito Martins in San Francisco. Many arts organizations are facing a challenge during the pandemic. There are so many questions to be answered. How to reopen safely and how city officials can help them to do so. To talk about that, we invited arts experts. In the South Bay, the director of the San Jose Office of Cultural Affairs, Carrie Adams Happner. Denise Bradley Tyson, she's the acting director for Arts Commission for the city and county of San Francisco. In the North Bay, Kristen Madsen, she's the director of Creative Sonoma. And in Oakland, we invited Roberto Bedoya, he is the cultural affairs manager for the city. Hello and welcome to all of you. I really appreciate your time. So Denise, I want to start with you. Museums are already opened with uh, uh, limited capacity, but what are the guidelines for uh, art galleries, for example? Right now, the San Francisco art galleries have not yet reopened, but I think that they're moving towards that. But I think, you know, right now with the museums, it's uh, 25% um, capacity. And I've been to both the, um, the De Young Museum and San Francisco Museum of uh, Modern Art, and it seems to be working. And I, I think that the, uh, the people who are visiting the museums are really enjoying sort of being in an uncrowded environment, which to be able to stand back and appreciate the, uh, the art. Um, so the city is still sort of in process, and I think you've seen where, you know, the city is moving towards um, expanding its opening of a lot of uh, public spaces. Um, and, you know, I think art galleries are, are on that part of that list. All right. So, I mean, many organizations are shifted to online performances or arts exhibitions are going virtually as well. And Carrie, we had, I had the pleasure to go to have a sneak peek at the Institute of uh, Contemporary Art in San Jose. And I love the facade. The arts are amazing. The uh, inside as well, it's beautiful. I agree. I love the San Jose Institute of Contemporary Art has um, is one of those great bright spots during this pandemic, and it it's an organization that rep represents so many, so many that have really thought how to reuse their facility in a new way. And so the, the exhibition you're speaking to is one of that is encouraging people to get out and vote, and the Institute of Contemporary Art will be a polling place. And that's, uh, and we're having other arts organizations that will be polling places too in San Jose, like the Mexican Heritage Plaza. So you're seeing a lot of creativity and adaptive change amongst our arts community. And that's, you know, one of the things we're really proud of about the arts because people can adapt and change and pivot and they're so resilient. Wonderful. I love that. I really, uh, I really have so much fun yesterday over there. Um, they opened up for, uh, just for us to get some bureaus. It was amazing. Hey, Roberto, how is Oakland is helping local artists? Well, I was really blessed by an act of having some CARES money to distribute to our community. Uh, it's very odd. Oakland's population is less than 500,000. So we got CARES money late from the state just because of our population size. And mayor and council gave me $1.8 million. So I've been sort of trying to push that out the door. A lot of it is just to, CARES money is for recovery of lost revenue. So a lot of that is related to demonstrating losses uh, for individuals, artists, and organizations. And then I have a small pool of money set aside for technical assistance. So, so we're about ready to launch that, which will allow our, our artists and arts organizations to kind of amplify and improve their digital platforms. Um, so, you know, that seems one way we can offer some assistance to our cultural community. Um, so uh, we're, we're hustling, you know, um, as Carrie knows all too well, as a public agency, you know, you never know uh, about your money. <laughs> well, it's a challenge for everybody else. And also Kristen, um, I wanna bring you in. Um, I know you are 
in, in Sonoma, with Creative Sonoma, and also you are in touch with seven chamber of commerce to bring those businesses uh, to reopen safely, right? We ended up with some uh, funding, as did Roberto uh, from CARES Act, that went out in grants to arts organizations, but we had also received some funding from the National Endowment for the Arts and our county to work in partnership with the chambers in seven of our communities to reopen safely, as many of you all did, by expanding footprints out onto you know, parking strips or streets and closing those down to car traffic. Our funding then went to pay artists to come in and revitalize those areas and enliven them with art. I mean, it's one thing to say, come on down and sit on the street and eat. Um, it's another to have it enveloped with sculpture and murals and street paintings and chalk art and galleries and all kinds of stuff. So that's, that's happened in seven of our communities and we'll be continuing through at least December in some communities and probably into next year what we're finding is our residents really love it. So even though it's a challenge for traffic control and all the rest of that, um, the communities are really embracing the idea that this changes the shape of a downtown by using the arts to make it feel like a much more lively, vibrant place. So we're, um, we're kind of fingers crossed that that might be something that has a longer lasting impact. As I said on my intro, there, there are so many challenges to, we are facing now because of the pandemic and so on. So Denise, I know San Francisco will be uh, uh, donating some money. I believe it's $1,000 for six months for about 130 artists starting, I uh, believe, next year. Is that right? Well, there is a, um, a submission process. Um, our staff just started engaging in sort of uh, doing outreach to the artist community to make sure everyone was aware of what the um, sort of qualifications uh, were. But the city has been very aggressive in supporting, um, you know, supporting artists. And um, there are about 10 different grant categories that are supporting um, organizations and individual artists starting as early as, last, as next year. So um, one that I'd like to highlight because it's gotten a bit of attention is pretty unique is the Universal Basic Income Grant, which you may be referring to. We'll be making a grant to one organization to serve as a regranting entity that will provide close to $800,000 in support of individual artists. So it's modeled after UBI programs. It'll provide, as you said, $1,000 to approximately 130 artists for six months. Um, and the Arts Commission also supports small and mid-sized organizations with budgets under two million. And then we have grants for the arts and other city program that supports larger cultural institutions. Well, Carrie, um, San Jose, I believe it's bring some um, grants to local artists as well. Can we talk about numbers? Absolutely. So um, we've all mentioned the CARES Act money. So the city of San Jose was a recipient of coronavirus relief funds. So we are now in the process of awarding $2.6 million in grants to nonprofit arts organizations and individual artists as creative entrepreneurs. And I'm really, really proud of this because what we were able to do is internally advocate for additional uh, funding from this pool of funds really as positioning artists as small businesses, as creative entrepreneurs. So we were able to not only tap funds identified for the arts, but in addition to small business funds. So we're really excited about that. It equates to about 170 grants and uh, they range anywhere from, for individual artists are on average about $2,000 and for arts organizations are anywhere from 10 to 65,000. But you know, uh, to what Roberto was saying, you know, this funding is strictly for economic relief because there's been so much economic hardship over the last seven months. And we know that artists and arts organizations were the first to close down and are likely to be some of the last to come back online given all the restrictions. And we know that artists have lost so much revenue from gigs or um, performances. And so it's a very hard time. So it's really important that um, 
people really show their support of the arts and arts organizations. Absolutely. And Roberto, I wanted to bring you in because um, when you drive around Oakland or San Francisco or San Jose, in, even Sonoma or Napa County as well, you see artists painting uh, murals, especially because of the pandemic. Uh, people are just graffiti all the time. And then, you know, uh, for not a good cause, I'm going to cited that way and then all these artists came to do some to expose their work to to the the people walking on the street we call i guess public arts right i'm gonna sort of echo a little bit of what uh was talked about uh public art and how controversial it can be there's after george floyd there was a the killing and murder of george floyd downtown oakland became a hotbed of a lot of DIY mural work of graffiti artists and because the city was boarded up and within shortly thereafter people artists started to play paint and you know we you know then they did Black Lives Matters on the uh, uh, on the street so that was what I like to call part of kind of the beauty of Oakland that I have a community of very uh, dedicated cultural activists uh, who have a strong sense of justice and they they assert their voice. Um, the Oakland Museum came forward and another uh, strong community group called the um, <clears throat> Black Cultural Zone, which is in East Oakland, to uh, archive these um, group, these poster protest art. And um, so that will result in an exhibition down the road. And there's numerous. In terms of public art itself, we have, you know, like a public art collection at many cities. And we also have a 1% for public art and private development. Uh, the city is already kind of built out in many ways. So there isn't a whole lot of public art that is supported with capital improvement fundings. Um, so most of the public art right now is in private development. Next question will be for all of you, and I'm gonna start with you, Roberto. Uh, regardless of the money, the funding for local artists, what are the most challenging uh, issue you encounter during the pandemic? The pandemic is amplified, uh, and my colleagues understand this. Um, how anemic Oakland is in terms of my, how much money gives out to the, its cultural sector. Uh, I give out 1.5, San Francisco gives out about 12, San Jose gives, gives about five. So we're just a small, we're a small um, agency in a, in a very robust and very active Bay Area scene. So I'm constantly, um, have to face that challenge. Uh, I also have a lot of small and mid-sized organizations. I don't have big ones. The ballet, the big museums are in San Francisco. I joked with my colleagues in SF uh, about like, you know, how San Francisco has a robust cultural district program and all. And my joke was, well, Oakland can be a cultural district. All your artists live in my town. You know what I mean? <laughs> So the theater artists, the uh, musicians that perform at the symphony in, in SF, they may, they call Oakland home. So there is a weird sense of trying to understand the Bay Area as an ecosystem and what is going on here among us. Uh, I'm very, very proud of the fact that I have a very active community. They constantly let us know what they want. And I have some great, uh, partners, the East Bay Community Foundation, the Akhenati Foundations, and Rainin. So I have some good philanthropic partners. Okay, Carrie, what about for you in San Jose? Um, thank you. I think one thing that during the pandemic that we are really realizing is all the mental health issues that our communities are experiencing. And the role of the arts to really help 
uh, provide some sense of connection and empathy around that. We just had, a, we're, we're applying a lot of a, an economic development lens to our public artwork right now. And so uh, we had percent for art revenues uh, for capital projects at the San Jose International Airport. And rather than do a very large art and technology installation, we decided to, to kind of flip it. And we commissioned San Jose artists to contribute works that they have made over the past seven months that really spoke to this time and it's called holding the moment. So we've commissioned almost 100 works. And when you see this body of work and I'll share with you the images, uh, Gleitzen, it's really incredible just to see everything that people are going through on a very visceral, very emotional level. And it's not only is it the pandemic or isolation, but it's also the, you know, the clear, um, just awakening that our society is having around racial inequities and, you know, the protests. The body of work speaks to all of that. And I think that's what has been so powerful about these past seven months is that, you know, we need to take care of each other and our mental health. But this is also a time where we really need to address, you know, the systemic inequities around race that have been persisting for hundreds of years. And it's through the arts that we can help build empathy and understanding around that. Absolutely, uh, there's no question about that. And Kristen, and for you, I mean, the challenge, you, it must be double the size because also on the top of the pandemic, you have the fires in Sonoma and Napa County. So. I was just gonna say it's crisis fatigue. You know, we have been doing fires every year uh, for three years, throw a flood in there and then pandemic, and then, uh, you know, racial justice reckoning. So I think that really is what's got folks pretty much worn down. I think that, you know, we talk about a new normal. Our new normal is adaptability. There, there's no one new thing we're going to go be in the new normal. We have to be ready that normal is changing, ever changing in a different kind of way. I think if there is not to be a Pollyanna, but if there is a, a plus to come out of it, I do think that folks in Sonoma are recognizing that the calcification of the silos in which we have functioned has to break now. There's just no possibility we can live in the kind of communities that we live in, doing the kind of work we do with government in its silos and with the community in its silos and all of us taking one issue at a time and addressing it. I do think there is a different openness and, and really um, an urgency to saying, yeah, what can the arts team up with in order to solve a bigger problem and for the arts to take their role as civic players. You know, we, we all have so much to do and we're all working on our arts issues only, but if the arts aren't at the table when you're talking about community development or mental health issues, as Carrie was saying, or, you know, any kind of a social service, then shame on us for not being there and, and putting the arts stamp on that too. So I hope those are, those are issues that are coming to the forefront. Before I sign off, I want to kind of, um, Thank you, but I also want to sort of bring uh, up this issue, and the San Francisco knows this. Our, our cultural affairs is supported in, by, by transit occupancy tax. Oakland has never had a, a big hotel industry. People stayed in the city, and they, you know, the conventional tours are in the city, and so in some ways that's speaks to our anemic, our anemic sort of condition. Uh, but that is all like going, when you look ahead, those revenues are down significantly. But I think one last comment before I adjourn, and thank you, is working across sector is really the way forward. We have to look at this moment of intersectionality as dealing, this is, this is what's being called upon us to sort of figure out pathways that are about so rising up civic life holistically. On that note, kids, thank you so much. Gotta go. Thank you, Roberto. I appreciate Bye, it. Bye, Roberto. So Robert has to leave. He has a meeting with the mayor of uh, the city of Oakland. So Denise, um, I know you are new to um, 
to the, your position at, as a director of acting director for the uh, Arts Commission of the city and county of San Francisco. But what are your challenges? What are the challenges you're facing? I think um, just you know, speaking about city support, I think that San Francisco, maybe because our mayor, Mayor London Breed, you know, formally before she was a board of supervisor, member and mayor, she ran a community-based cultural center. So the arts are very close to her heart and at the forefront of her uh, uh, priorities, policy priorities. So the city has done a great job of bringing together department heads working across, um, you know, workforce development, you know, the, um, uh, the mayor's office, Department of Public Health, all departments have come together to address the issues that we are facing. As you mentioned, artists fall into a lot of that category because they're historically sort of among the lowest paid. One of the things that the city just recently, that the Arts Commission just undertook, um, we have new application, a new application uh, uh, that just went live that's going to infuse another six million into the arts ecosystem. And that specifically will focus on uh, BIPOC communities and those hit hearted by COVID. The city also, um, you know, when the shelter in place ordinance went in place on March 17th, on March 23rd, the mayor announced the San Francisco relief funds for the arts, which allocated 2.75 million in support of working artists and cultural organizations financially impacted by COVID. And then another program that just got uh, implemented is um, um, a brand new COVID response initiative called JAMS. It stands for Just Add Music. And it's a fast track permit that uh, enables artists to provide entertainment or amplified sounds in outdoor spaces. It's totally free and helps to bring the arts back into the community at outdoor dining spots, you know, which we have a lot of now, you know, farmers markets, small gatherings, and even for fitness classes. So the city has been, I think, taking some really innovative approaches to how we can get money out to um, the arts and community and cultural organizations. What I think is fascinating how we can come together to help each other and to find new ideas to keep the businesses going, uh, you know, open. Uh, the one thing I'm concerned in, not right now in October or November, but in December and January, because when the rain season starts, how you are you having some meetings to talk about arts organizations or other types of businesses in all the cities? Uh, Kristen, let me start with you. You know, Sonoma County has not emerged from the most um, serious restriction yet. So we would love to be thinking about the idea of, oh, great, how are we meeting? And this is going to be a challenge from outdoors to inside. But um, yeah, we, we've definitely been talking about it, with, certainly from the art side of these businesses and chambers of commerce that we've been working with and talking about, well, can we, is there funding to even try to provide um, artistically created and drawn awnings so that outdoors can still be an open space for us during you know December and January and talking about how much it costs to put heat lamps in. So it's been more about thinking about how to continue and maintain what's going on out of doors than trying to figure out pushing inside because we're not even, we haven't even crossed that threshold yet. Great points, Chris. And I think it's really important to um, just remind your viewers that you know the state will come out with their guidance, but really what happens at the county level is that all of us are beholden to our own public health departments. And it's whatever restrictions are more strict, right? So, you know, the county health sets this, the ceiling, if you will. So we're all working, you know, in lockstep with the guidance and the orders that we receive from our public health departments. And right now, there is a restriction on gatherings in San Jose. You can have up to 200 people at a gathering um, with under certain conditions or 100 people inside or 25% capacity of a building, whichever is lower. Yeah, while it's frustrating that they haven't reopened, she was very happy that you know, their footprint now has uh, expanded exponentially in terms of they have a very robust virtual um, online programming schedule 
and they have people who are tuning in from, you know, from the continent of Africa, throughout Europe and across the country, which they could have never, you know, which in terms of the in-person public programs, given the footprint of the museum, you know, they could have accommodated a couple of hundred people as at best. Um, so it's, it's great and it sort of helps institutions expand their donor base. So um, we, unfortunately we have to wrap up. So uh, Christian, what is the best way if, if people want to find out more, local artists uh, find out more, how to get some financial help or other types of help? They can go to creativesonoma.org and there's plenty of information on the website, but at the bottom of the website, you can see how to contact me directly. My email's there as well. Okay, and beautiful eyeglasses. I love them. <laughs> Thank you. So, Carrie, how a local artist can contact the city of San Jose? Please come to the Office of Cultural Affairs website, sanjoseculture.org, and you'll find a variety of different ways in which you can participate, whether it's public art or grants programs or technical assistance or workshops special events, all sorts of things that we do in our office to serve the community and to serve our arts community. Thank you so much. And Denise, and how people in San Francisco and San Francisco County can get some help. It's um, sfartcommission.org. I wanted to thank you, all of you. Thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gleason. Thank you, Gleason. Um, any questions you have regarding arts in San Francisco, you can go to art-info at sf.org. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for watching us. If you have any questions for us, let us know at tips at newsupnow.org, tips at newsupnow.org, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.